you're evil and you're on the highway to hell. It's that simple. Because by default, you're an authoritarian, you're big brother, and you're saying, no, we got to maintain the status quo. We got to beat the slaves to get them to work. We got to keep them hungry. So we got to hold this monetary reality over their head to say, look, you better go out there and bust your behind at work, or you're going to be the next guy living under the bridge. That's you saying that. It ain't me. I'm for setting the captives free, 100% free, absolutely free, unequivocally free, unconditionally free, totally free. Do you understand? And I'm for universal freedom. So this is how I cope. Do you understand? My hands are clean. My heart is pure because I let God in. And you can do the same thing and be empowered. I'm empowered, man. I'm, I'm free. In fact, the reality is because I've embraced such a, a pure kind of attitude about this whole thing and cut to the chase and say well let's you know let's let, let's get real here let's uh, you know not you know split hairs over this thing let's really you know set some ground rules here to have this level playing field okay let's figure it out you know why I agree with Victor Hugo I, that you know prosperity makes monsters and adversity makes men but what he's what is he trying to say that's true in our current paradigm I am a big proponent of everybody knowing adversity everybody knowing the plight of the downtrodden, the poor, and the poor, desperate out there, the oppressed. Okay, just like Jesus said, because he's one of those. He counted himself as one of those. So I'm a big advocate of that. That's his paradigm of division. Do you understand? One person has an advantage over another, and it has everything to do with money. Face it. Be honest. Be intellectually honest. All the stuff about your philosophies and everything else, man, doesn't matter. Okay, at the end of the day, just ask yourself those simple questions. Are you or are you not in favor of 100% universal, absolute, unequivocal freedom, utter freedom for all? If you are, then you're a holy human being. Do you understand? You're on the highway to heaven. You're going to be found fit, worthy, deserving to inherit this renewed earth Jesus talked about. When we get these imperishable bodies, imagine that. Okay, and people say, well, I don't want to live forever. Well, I get that too. You don't want to live forever. Just like I get Victor Hugo, but at the same hand, I say, if we're all born rich, well, that's a whole other paradigm because nobody's got, there's nothing to learn. Okay, but you understand how this thing works here? Okay, I'm just trying to make a point. And the point is, is that our paradigm, our perception, our perspective can be affected wildly <coughs> if we just wake up to simple truths that can completely alter our way of thinking because it makes our thinking in line with God's thinking. It's not hard. It's certainly not hidden. If God hid what he was all about, his personality, his character, then, you know, what would be the purpose? Then how could we adopt it? How could we mirror him, reflect him, and represent him properly? We couldn't. So you understand we're being duped. All of us are being duped and taken. It's a scam. It's a scam from the pit of hell. I mean, there's three things that make us really distinct from all the other creatures. One is clothing. No other creature on earth has any use of clothing, right? But all of us, you know, we've got this shame we got to cover up, right? Am I right? Okay. And then money, right? Money. Money is the thing that causes us to go into these wars. That's I say us going to war for monetary reasons makes us distinct, but you could lump it up into two things. There's only two things that make us distinct because it's money that drives us into these dubious wars to kill for money. There's no other creature on earth that would do these things. But money is what di it distinguishes us from all the other creatures and what makes us evil and makes our hearts impure and ugly in the sight of God. It makes us a, a, a pungent stinky aroma in the nostrils, a smell, okay, uh, in the, in the, in the uh, nostrils of God. Odor. And uh, a, a very uh, objectionable odor in his nostrils. Our love of money. And who doesn't love money? There's not a human on earth that doesn't appreciate money that doesn't understand the distinct advantage to having money and the distinct disadvantage to not having money. So I'm not going to sit here and claim that, you know, I'm some superior being who's evolved and everything. But, you know, my cost of living is very low, so my sense of freedom is very high. But it's affected by the spirit of the air. This is a satanic spirit. It's a demonic spirit. It's this osmosis I talk about 
that you're going to get your fair shuff, suffering. I don't need to go down to the city council to get my fair share. I don't, I don't want to be that close to it. There's no purpose. I'm not going to get into a shouting match with anybody over these issues. I know that they're originating from on high. And they're, it's just a method of, of, of muddying the waters and distracting our attention, diverting our attention away from the bankster class. That's causing all our problems. Okay? Look, folks. Capitalism, free market, supply and demand... All, all these terms, okay, are about economic theorems and philosophies and principles, okay? And progress, you know, we can have a conversation, a dialogue, a discourse about what progress is relative to these things. And you would quickly agree with me that progress means that because we find we, that's a civilized society. Okay, you could look at that on a worldwide basis, or you could look at it as a neighbor, your neighborhood, that you know, micro level or a macro level, worldwide or your neighborhood. Okay, you, your neighbors all working together for the common good of your neighborhood, like a uh, what do they call these? Um, you know, they've got these. Uh, Oh, just the, uh, I, I, I can't remember the term, but just these gated communities and stuff where they got the, uh, <laughs> you know, they got somebody they elect to, to run the show and to enforce the rules and notify people of this or that. But um, We're so, such a messed up species, folks. We are so screwed up. God, if that's one thing people awaken to, Awake, admit that, confess that. We are an effed up species. And we've had everything working against us. Not just the organic stuff, but this invented stuff that makes me so nuts, okay, that I'm talking about here. They're causing our problem. They're causing our problems. They are not allowing progress, okay? Progress has a definition. And it, you can identify progress. Let's take a 10-year period of time. Let's okay, just snapshot in time. And progress in your neighborhood would mean what? Let's say, let's say you've got your own little um, your little neighborhood. You're, you're just a, a closed community, right, just to the inhabitants of your neighborhood. So like your own little country, right, little micro country. And you just guys decide to get off the Federal Reserve notes and you decide to use your own currency. You know, you say, let's start one with silver, okay. I don't know what the law is. There's probably laws against you doing that. And you say, we're, we're able to manufacture everything we need. Uh, and, you know, we've got this little, you know, it's a big neighborhood, let's say, and so you've got a fuel refining plant there, and you've got, you know, you could grow your own food, you've got a farm there. So, like I say, it's a good-sized neighborhood. And everything you need, you can make your own clothes, and uh, you can, um, you're just a closed little nation, you know, community nation. Um then you would say, what kind of progress do I want to see in 10 years living in this neighborhood? What improvements do I want to see? And all the neighbors write down what they want to see. And Mainly, they want to see their money go up in worth. They want to see stuff getting cheaper, right? So the price that they have to pay for their gasoline, they want that to go down because that means their money relative, their currency relative to that commodity was worth more. Now, to me, yes, we would all agree in that community that is progress, right? So there's no discussion, there's no debate, there's no argument there. We know progress from regress. So right down the line, we want the same thing to happen. And as we find easier and easier methods to produce not only the things we need, but the things we want as a community sharing, right, commune, sharing, and working together, to lift all the boats so none get swamped. Remember, we understand the principle of osmosis and the spirit of the air that's just prowling around trying to, 
you know, trying to destroy somebody and just picking, you know, like a hyena, right? They can't, if there's a, 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 a you know, if there's a herd of gazelles, they're going after one. They're going to pick the weak one or the young one, whatever. They're going to pick on one and they're going to focus their attention and take them down. That's what's going on, okay? So, <laughs> in our society today with the suppression of free speech, uh, you know, the First Amendment being assaulted, and this, the First and Second Amendments are the only things that keep this country still livable at this point. I just want to put that out there because I know I digress six ways to Sunday here. But listen, I hope I'm making my point very clear. So we could have an excess, uh, an abundance, a superfluity, use whatever term you want, more than enough supply, okay, supply and demand, you get it? supply and so is stuff not only is dirt cheap it becomes free at some point you understand free freedom we're all set free people don't care about money anymore it's all worth so much that we see it for the stupid little game that it is that we don't need to play that no other creature on the face of the earth finds a need to play and if they understood it, they would want to stay steer clear because they see all the problems caused humanity through the ages. Why in Hades would any creature want anything to do with money? They wouldn't. And look at the clothes. What's wrong with us? That's an example of organic uh, derangement. Organ We're all deranged. You understand? And look, I'm as deranged as anybody. I I'm modest. That makes me a prude, maybe. But I am not the guy you're going to catch out there flashing, okay? It's just not going to happen. As much as I really don't care. I mean, sure, I let all the women in the world see me. I don't like the idea of men seeing me naked. But I don't care if all the women want to see me naked. I'm glad, sure, you know, whatever. But it doesn't work that way. You don't get to pick and choose. But, you know, I am, you know, a male. And uh, I, I love the female. And... Uh, you know, I'd like to be absorbed into that, the essence of the female. And, uh, you know, I, I, they, they turn me on, man. I just, you know, what can I say? Without women, without the female of the species, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know what a climax was. Okay, they're always in my fantasies, and I just, you know, their, their qualities are magical. They're, 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 they're beyond magical. They're miraculous. Okay, that's what it, that's what it really comes down to. The female species to me, and they maybe feel the same way about men. I don't know, but I do think they're more evolved. They're less violent. Okay, that that alone, that they, they have babies. I mean, if if it was up to men, it would go extinct. There's not a guy on earth that's going to agree to push a baby out his genitals. And women, I mean, I, look, I personally would be the first 60 year old virgin if I had to have a baby. I would have no relations with men at all. And I even told my daughters, look, unless you want a big fat baby to take care of and you want to have to nurse him and mother him and girlfriend him and wife him and be his housekeeper and uh, his maid and uh, I mean on and on and his cook, okay, and his launderer, okay, and you just want a big whiny baby with a lot of demands and needs, then stay away from men. Okay, but neither one of them took my advice. They, they love men and, uh, you know, so be it. I don't get it. All I know is I think they're more evolved, and we do ourselves, men would do themselves a great service to listen to women more. They really would, because all this intelligence stuff, this business about men are more, you know, we're more capable of running the world and all this crap. All, I mean, look at how has that proven itself out? Okay, because, there, you know, intelligence is a very subjective term. You know, we're all genius in some way. To male, female, I mean, it's just that they're more the nurturing kind of intelligence. You know, as a generalization, because I know there's plenty of evil women, too. All I'm saying is that there seems like a whole hell of a lot more evil men. When I hear, I watch Forensic Files or Dateline, and I see what's going on in the world. And men, I mean, I'm disgusted to be of the same gender. I'm disgusted to be of the same species if I hear these kind of guys. And when it has anything to do with harming a child, man, I just want to poke my ears and eyes out, man. But listen... I encourage everybody to turn to God in communion, fellowship. It's like intercourse. You're having this divine spiritual intercourse, okay? It's a beautiful thing that God loves us so much. And even with all our failings, all our weaknesses that we fall with besetting sin over and over and over, 
He picks us up if we let him, and he dusts us off if we let him, and he says, I love you, and my grace is sufficient for you. Now get up and serve humanity and serve me because this is what's going to give you the greatest gratification at the end of your days, and you're going to be rewarded. You keep a pure heart, and this will be the best thing you could do for just for today, just for today, to be as happy as you can today. Keep a pure heart. Go out there and say, I'm willing that you be set free. Yeah, I'd agree to everybody on earth having their own government government approved money printing presses. Yeah. Let's let's get radical. Let's get crazy here. I'm willing that we all have a level playing field from birth. That we we recognize, understand and honor God, okay, telling us that this earth is mine, saith the